Hey everybody, it's Cecilia from Part on Farm. It is about 10 o'clock and I took you along this morning for our kit journey. And if you follow us on Instagram or Facebook, you saw that we also had ducks on the loose this morning. And this is one of those days that things just kind of keep rolling in. Um, I we had a busy morning and I got a call that I had to, after I got the ducks in, that I needed to run to the church and pick up something that a friend of mine had dropped off for me. So I did that and on my way home I was like, oh, in the chaos this morning of getting the kids up and getting them dressed and getting them off to school and all of that, I never turned on my grow lights with the kits and the ducks and the everything going on. I forgot. So I came down this morning to turn on my grow lights and I discovered some rodent damage on my plants. And these used to be really beautiful broccolis and they have really done a number on them. These, there's a couple that look um, okay. This one's still got, this leaf got chewed off too, but. Um, so yeah. <laughs> So I wanted to show you because I think it's important that we be real with you and we show you that not every day is a victory. And I almost feel like I brought this on myself a little bit the other day in one of the videos. I said, you know, some days on the farm feel like a victory and that day felt like a victory. And then there are days that don't. And this is definitely one of those days that's starting off a little less victory-like. Um, hopefully we'll turn it around, but it's funny because usually I enjoy rainy days every once in a while because when it's sunny out or when the weather's nice, we work and we work hard. And so rainy days have been a little bit of a respite time for us where, I don't know, I just really love to have like a warm cup of tea and my book and my fuzzy blanket and snuggle up and relax and rest and enjoy the day and I think it's important that you take those times and Seth and I always say we make hay while the sun shines and you have to on the farm and sometimes you put in you know 15 16 hour days and sometimes when it's rainy you take advantage of that and a lot of times that means doing the farm paperwork and the things that go along with that but I was really looking forward to some respite today <laughs> which it has not so far been filled with rest and relaxation. Um, and that's okay. That's just part of, part of the process and part of the journey. And I just wanted to share it with you. So what I'm going to do in regards to these seedlings, actually, what do you guys think? Should I save the seedlings and see if they come back? Even though some of them, like this one, I don't know if you can see that has been chewed down to this little nubber. Um, so I don't know. I don't know if I should try and save them and see if they come back or if I, I might just leave these down here and see what happens as I start. I'll probably start some more upstairs on the heating mats just to see if I can get them to go a little bit faster because these are about three weeks old and Sort of the real bummer about it is yesterday I was going to set them out in our porch, which has windows on three sides. So it's sort of like a greenhouse and start slowly hardening them off in the mornings and during the day uh, to the weather so that I could get them transplanted under some row covers out to the garden as soon as possible. Um, I don't think they're in a condition to be starting that now. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and start some on the heat mats and see see what happens. Um, if you guys have any suggestions on what to do with these ones or how to help them along, um, I definitely would appreciate it. And I'll keep you updated on how they look. Um, in the meantime, to try and prevent further damage, because it's weird, they, they the mouse or I assume it's a mouse, I guess. <laughs> we live in an old farmhouse. So for those of you who are alarmed that I have a mouse in my house, um, honestly, 
and I hate to say this, it's not that rare. We have an old farmhouse. We live in the middle of 40 acres of woods and field and we have animals outside and as much work as we have done to seal this place up and as much as we have um, combated the rodents, it's not that surprising to have a mouse uh, every once in a while. So we are working on it. Obviously, I don't love the idea that there is a mouse um, in the house, um, but that's just part of being out in the country and part of living in an old farmhouse is that's a battle that you you fight. And so what I'm going to do is I don't care for poison, so I'm not going to put poison down. Um, I am going to put some traps down and honestly the trap that I've found to be most effective and if you are squeamish or you don't want to hear about that I would just skip over this part of the video but I'm going to tell you how I make my traps um, because I the springy traps like freak me out I don't I don't want to have to set that and get my finger caught in it and I've just never used one and I don't care to and I used the glue traps once, but honestly, it was super sad to me. It hurt my heart that like this mouse was stuck there until it basically starved to death. Um, and so I don't know that that's, I don't know. I don't know that there's a good way to catch and kill a mouse necessarily. And I'm not telling you that this way is super humane either because it's not, but um, it's effective and yeah, so what I do and I'll show you is I take a five gallon pail and I fill it, fill it, fill it. <laughs> That's not even a word. Oh, you guys, did I mention that I'm struggling with the time change? <laughs> I'm just struggling today. <laughs> today is not my day. Um, <laughs> so you fill it halfway full with water, your five gallon pail, and then you put sunflower seeds on the top of it and they float. And then you take like a little two by four or some sort of board or something as like a ramp up it. And then I sprinkle sunflower seeds on the ramp. Um, and that kind of lures them into the bucket. And once they are in the bucket of water, they can't get out. And then I just take my bucket full of water and I dump it um, where you want to dispose of that. So that's what I do. Um, like I said, it's probably not the most humane, but I don't know that there are super humane ways to do that. I don't know. Um, so, and maybe the springy mouse trap is probably the most humane, but I don't know. So that's what I did as far as putting down a trap. And then I also took little cotton balls and I put peppermint oil on them because supposedly mice don't like that smell and it will help repel them. And so I just took a bunch of them and stuffed them around my seedlings to try and help that. And hopefully it will deter them from bothering my seedlings. Um, I am surprised that they didn't bother the seedlings on the bottom shelf. Well, no, I don't have any on the way bottom, but on the second shelf, they were on the tallest shelf that I have seedlings on, which is wild to me. But so that's... That's what's going on today at Pardon Farms. Um, I know it's not a glamorous video. Today is like all of my videos are shot in super ugly spaces, but I appreciate you guys hanging out with me and I just really want to be real with you and I hope that you learned something or were entertained. Um, so even on days like today, we just laugh because what else can you do? Um, Seeds are simple. I mean, it's sad to lose some seedlings and it's disappointing because this was one of the first things I was going to be able to plant out in my garden. Um, but it's just seeds and I can start more and it's not that big of a deal. So um, I just wanted to show you a little bit of our struggles and thanks for hanging out with me and have a good day and keep growing.